yes today and uh, we're not producing a heck of a lot of solar energy but I keep getting questions about how to determine how many solar panels I actually need for my homestead or my farm how, how many solar panels does it take to power an air conditioner so I'm going to try and address those questions and go through a few fundamental questions we need to go through in order to, to determine what our needs actually are and therefore determine what it's going to cost us if we do go with solar panels. So hold on, here we go. Okay, so as I mentioned, I'm going to try and help you figure out uh, through this presentation how to size up what your solar panel requirements are for whatever your specific goals are. I cannot help you determine what the costs are going to be. Uh, that's a very temporal thing. You know, you know, it, you may be viewing this three years from now, and solar panel costs may have come down a great a great deal. There may not be any incentives at that time. There's currently still incentives. You may have a, an installer install it, or or another person may do it themselves. Some people will have a roof mount system, and they need repairs of the roof first in order to have that go on. Other people may do a rack, a rack mount system. Uh, some people may build another building and put it on a on a separate building and use that building for well for you know for livestock. Uh, you may choose to use microinverters, or you may use a standard inverter. You may use a grid tied at, like I'm using, or go off grid and require a battery backup system. So the costs involved can be absolutely tremendously variable. So I can't go into that, but I can present some information to you in this in this format that may help you determine, geez, what your needs uh, actually are, a way to calculate uh, how many solar panels you're going to need. So it all starts off with what are your goals? So specifically, one of our goals was to reduce our carbon footprint. We wanted to decentralize, decrease our dependency on outside resources. We wanted to save money. We're going to be living here the rest of our lives, and uh, and therefore we're going to be, you know, electricity is going to be free after so many years. Some people look at, geez, they ask me, what's your return on investment? And that's quite variable depending on when you're buying the system, what type of system you're putting in. So that's quite variable. And I look at it quite differently as a permaculturist because the various forms of capital. Uh, so I, I won't go into that in this presentation, but if you're interested, leave a comment uh, or a question and I'd be happy to review that in, in the future. So are you powering your home? Are you powering a motor home that you're traveling around with and you're only using certain times of the year? Are you doing other specific uh, uh, functions? Like for, uh, what, an, a separate system I built was a portable power station. So I have a solar panel to, uh, to back up the batteries in that portable power station that I use on site. So how many panels are you gonna need? Let's try and figure some of that out. Well, it's really dependent on your geographic location, your climate, the peak sun hours in your area the orientation of, of the structure that you're putting the, the panels on. Is it a roof mount or a rack mount? What's the solar exposure? And again, it, geographic location has a lot to do with it. Or if you're it, it being shaded by trees or other buildings or skyscrapers, whatever the situation, or you're on the north side of the mountain in, uh, in North America. So how much energy does your household actually use? All of these are important variables to determine just you know, how many solar panels you're gonna need. So what are your energy needs? What's the load on the grid that you're, that you're currently using? Uh, so you've gotta look at your electrical bills. The average usage often given in a, on a monthly report is the kilowatt hours. And that's just a unit of measure. It's like a gallon or a liter or a foot or a meter. It's a unit of measure is all that is. So it's the power used at any point in time to times the total time that it's actually used. For example, a thousand watt high pressure sodium grow light uses one kilowatt of energy every hour. A hundred watt light bulb, you can run that for 10 hours in order to, to be equal to one kilowatt energy, uh, hour energy. A 100 watt, 100 watt light bulb run for 24 hours is going to use 2.4 kilowatt hours of energy. That 1000 watt grow light run for 8 hours a day will use 8 kilowatt hour energy per day. 
So determining your daily usage, uh, you can gather up your bills over the last month, 12 months, and you get them for January through December uh, or whatever time frame that you're looking at. And if for some reason uh, you were away and the, the usage was less than, than typical, uh, find a different way of calculating that month because you really want to see what your annual kilowatt consumption actually is. Then you want to divide that by 12 to determine what your monthly average is. So, you know, if you're in a cold climate, your energy uh, electric usage m might be much higher during the winter months because you're running electric heaters or whatever. And during the summer months in a, in a hot climate, in the desert environment, you may be running air conditioners all summer long, and that's when you're using your most energy. So getting the average monthly uh, kilowatt hour usage is most important. Then take that and get your daily by dividing your monthly by 30. And that daily average kilowatt hour usage is what we're gonna be using in all our calculations further down the road. But first we're gonna introduce another topic, peak sun hours. So a peak sun hour is the hour during, the, during which the intensity of the sunlight is 1,000 watts per square meter. You know, that definition isn't that useful. It, it helps us determine what the panels can produce in our location, where we are in the country. So if you're in Arizona, your peak sun hours is, is a higher number, and therefore you need fewer panels. Uh, if you're living where I live, in the uh, cold temperate climate near a Great Lake and there's snow cover and cloud cover, well, your peak sun hours is less and therefore you need more, uh, a greater number of uh, solar panels or at least a higher total wattage for, uh, for the solar panel array. So the typical daily solar energy in your area is what we're going to use and that's our peak sun hours. It occurs at solar noon when the sun is the highest in the sky. It occurs during the summer months when the sun's position, relative position in the sky is much higher. The solar energy increases uh, as we get closer to the equator and decreases as we move away from the equator. So if you if live in an area with a large body of water, there's more cloud cover, more snow cover, and uh, that will decrease your peak sun hours. Uh, so the peak sun hours across most of the continental United States is between 3 and 5. So let's look at some calculations. So the remember we're bringing forward now when we calculated our daily kilowatt hours. We divide that by our peak sun hours. That gives us the kilowatt hour energy that our whole solar panel array, all of the solar panels hooked together in total, need to meet. So we take our daily kilowatt hour average divided by our peak sun hours, and you can get that off the internet, uh, and that will give us a kilowatt hour energy that our whole solar panel array needs to. So we know what our full footprint is gonna, gonna require us to, our total number of solar panels, the total wattage is gonna have to be. We multiply the kilowatts needed by our total solar panel array by a thousand to get the total watts needed by our solar panel array because we buy our solar panels in watts. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So we multiply, again, we multiply the kilowatt hours needed by our total solar panel array by a thousand to get the total watts needed from our solar panel array. So now we've got, got the, uh, divide the, the wattage uh, that we just calculated by the size of the solar panels that we select. So if you're using a 250 watt versus a 300 watt, you need fewer 300 watt panels than you do 250 watt panels because they're more powerful and they have higher wattage and therefore the total wattage from our solar panel array will be met by the number of panels as deemed necessary by the, uh, the, the wattage of each individual panel. Now, if you needed to go by the square footage of your, of your roof and you had good solar exposure there and you said, geez, I've got a really small roof, you could calculate the number, and I think they're three by five approximately, the solar panels. You could calculate how many of those you could fit on it and divide the number of solar panels into 
the total wattage of the solar panel array and determine what wattage you need to, to, to get, the minimum wattage you need to get for your solar panels. Okay, uh, in 2015, the average annual electricity consumed by residents in the United States was 10,812 kilowatts annually. So almost 11,000 kilowatt hours annually. So let's do a calculation. We're going to use a number even bigger than that. We're going to say our, our monthly kilowatt hours used is 1,100 kilowatt, which is more than the, the average uh, it, and this is just used more than the average daily, um, I mean, see, annual consumption in the U.S. So we're going to use this number because it's a nice, easy, even number to, to, to work with. And, and, you, and you can plug in any numbers in this formula. So we have our, uh, our wattage per month. Uh, we need 1,100 kilowatts per month. We divide that by 30. That gives us 36.66, I rounded up to 37, kilowatt hours per day. So now we know what our daily kilowatt hours is. Now we, we, we take our daily kilowatt hours and we divide that by our peak sun hours. So our peak sun hours, uh, it, so it, we're going to take the average between 3 and 5. We'll use 4. We divide the 37 by 4, that gives us 9.25 kilowatt hours for, our, for, for your location. Let's say you're in Tennessee and it's 4. I don't know that it is that, but in Oswego, it's 3. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So you divide your daily kilowatt hour by the peak sun hours and all. And that gives you the total of 9.25 kilowatt hours for, for this specific location. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we need to multiply that times 1,000 in order to get 9,250 watts in, pan, in total panels to meet 100% of our needs. Remember, we, we multiply our kilowatts by 1,000 in order to, ter, to determine what our total wattage is. So we, now in this example, we need 9,250 watts in all of our panels put together to meet 100% of our needs. Now you may decide, I only want to meet 60% of my needs, or I want to meet 120%, I want some buffer zone. You determine wh what percentage you actually want to meet. So in this, in this example, we're, we got 9,250 watts in total panels. Now, we can go ahead and divide that by 250 watt panels and come up with 37 panels we need. Now again, this is a very large system, system larger than the average uh, U.S. resident. Uh, so that tells you you need 37 250 watt panels to meet your, your, your requirements to meet 100% of your needs annually. Now, during the winter months, you won't meet com that completely, but during the summer months, you'll, pr you'll produce more than what you need. I hope that makes sense. So, uh, the 37 times the 250 watt gives you 1,100 kilowatt hours per month. So, uh, you, you can get 150 watt systems, 350 watt systems, and these, I, I'm not sure how far they've gone up now, but they're probably even much higher. Uh, so what are things to consider? Certainly think about communicating with a certified solar panel installer. Uh, they're going to help you with tax incentives, so understand that. Uh, some people want a lease, uh, lease option as opposed to purchasing the system. And, and some of the lease options are actually pretty good. You know, they, the, the, you're paying a fixed rate for so many years, and it may be 10, 15 years, and then you have a buyout option, you know, for, you know, $100 or, or whatever. Uh, and I don't know the details of that, I'm just making that up right now. So you can look at various lease options. Uh, it's really dependent on the type of inverters that are being used. I've got microinverters because at the time they seemed like the very best system to install because I didn't have to worry about uh, my total production being decreased when there's trees uh, casting uh, shade onto some of the solar panels. 
So, and they'll recommend various specific uh, panels in your area as well. So that's the end of this presentation. I hope it helped answer some of the questions I've received and, and, and uh, if there are any further questions, I'm very happy to go further into these. Uh, I know that in the past people had wanted me to go ahead and demonstrate how I built uh, my uh, battery backup power station that I made that I bring around the property and use with the chainsaw. So I hope this was helpful. Please uh, like and share this with your friends um, and leave, leave a comment, uh, ask questions, I interact with me so I know is this the sort of thing you want more of in the future. Uh, I'm heavy into the permaculture. I haven't started doing some of my nutrition ones yet and there are many how to do farming things that I'm going to be doing around here and, and more construction as well. So let me know what you think about this uh, presentation as well. Uh, thanks so much and have a great day folks. Bye-bye now.